Broadcasting to the world from South Jersey, this is Anything Goes with Phil Rossi and J.J. Golick. A weekly podcast with different topics every week. The views and opinions on this show are entirely those of the hosts, guests, and callers and do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of any businesses or organizations mentioned during the show. And now, it's Anything Goes with Phil Rossi and J.J. Golick. Yes, it is. What is going on? My name is Phil Rossi. This is Anything Goes alongside, of course, J.J. Golick. Good day, what's up? Yo, what's going on, Phil? How are you? Doing great, how are you? Good. All right, so first topic today we're going to get right into it is Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, how was your Thanksgiving? It was very good. How about you? Yeah. I got to celebrate too, so first time for that. Really? Yeah, first time having to do two. How was it? It was great. I just have to pace yourself with the food, of course, you know. You got to be able to eat at both places. Now, how do we decide whose house we're going to first? whose house we're going to second. What's the dynamic? What are the conversations like? Well, you know what? Um, I was worried about that, and it turns out it was not hard at all for us because our families are opposite when it comes to Thanksgiving and the time they want to eat. So for her family, they like to eat early. They like to eat, you know, 2, 3 o'clock. My family, you know, regular dinner time, 4, 5 maybe even six, depending on when things are done. Right. So obviously I was like, oh, wow, that worked out. Um, Because I was anticipating, oh, well, how are we going to pull this off? Or they're going to want to eat at the same time. Right. And it wasn't that way. So it was, you know, it was still close together. You just, we explained to both, you know, sets of parents, we're not going to be able to eat a lot at either house because we, you know, you don't want to be rude uh, and you want to eat at both houses and, it just works out that they didn't want to eat at the same time. So he- here's what I would say. Uh, what I did was, personally, I went to my family's house. My fiance, she went to her family's house, and we just we ate with our families, and that was it. Now, because a lot of times I feel like it creates a lot of stress. Now, if you can work it out, you want to go to both places and, you know, be like, I can only eat this here, so then I got to go there later, that's cool. But at the same time, don't be scared to, like, God forbid you split apart for a second or for a day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it's okay, right? So if you're listening, you're like, oh, my God, I got to choose this, my family over her family or her family over... Listen, stop with the bullshit, right? Like, it's Absolutely. okay. Absolutely. It's okay. Like, you can go eat with your family or however you want to work it, and it's okay. If it's creating such a, a crazy dynamic to where if you choose your family over whatever, her family, and now you fight about it, some something's like, it's not, it's not worth it. It's ridiculous. Like... You don't. Have, you're not conjoined at the hip. Yeah. No need to. No need to fight over it. And you know, like I said, luckily it, it did work out. That's good. And we were able to do that. But you know, I've heard. I know uh, my parents used to do. Um, one would go to uh, this house for dinner, and then they go the other for dessert. Right. And that was the original game plan. We were going to do that. And then uh, it just so happened that the stars aligned, and we were able to eat it both, which is nice because. Um, my family and her family do things a little bit differently. Like they have some different dishes. Her family will do, um, you know, her mom makes a stuffing and she puts uh, sausage in it. And we don't really do that at my house. So, you know, you get to try different things right, and different it. styles. And it's nice. You, you know, you get to interact with both families. Um, and I think eventually, I'm sure down the line, it'll probably become a whole big thing, you know, right. down, down the line, not... Uh, this year, not next year, but yeah, to me, it's always a uh, like a weird dynamic. It happens, obviously, uh, you know, in households across America, where it's always this. You know, do we go to her house for Thanksgiving and my house for Christmas, and and you know, I guess it depends on you know the in laws, and it's also a big deal to me, uh, to be honest with you, if you're not married, right, right, yeah. because well, you know, what happens is when you're dating, it's cool if the families get along and the in laws, and that's all great, but uh, you know, you also have to think. That you're not married. Right. Right? So, yeah, and a lot of people, again, are scared to talk about these things because it, it makes them uncomfortable. Right. Right? Because to me, you're either married or you're not. Right. right. There is no in between. Like, I get, you know, we're dating and maybe we're engaged and, you know, but there really is no middle ground. Right? right. There's a difference between married and dating. There's a big difference. Now, you, you obviously, with the right person, you know, and we believe we're with those people at this point, is you can get to that, that point of marriage. But then there's also that thing to be said for, are we playing marriage when we're not married? Right. And I think a lot of people actually do that. And it's funny you bring that up because, 
you know, my family, and I don't know as much about her family, but there's people that are already planning our wedding and we're not even, in, you know, we, we haven't even been together a year, but I guess it's the chemistry we have. My parents are joking. Oh, well, when you two move in together, they have uh, kitchen sets now that they've gotten, they've upgraded. And they said, oh, when, when you and Hillary move in together, and I'm like, whoa, yeah. whoa, like, is there a strong possibility of that? Yes, there is. But at the same time, it hasn't happened yet. So, yeah, you and, know, and, don't rush it. Yeah, and listen, it's cool for, you know, listen, we love families. We love our own families. It's cool for the families and friends to, to fantasize and come up with their ideas and what they see in the future. That's cool. But at the same time, you know, it's my life. It's your life. It's, it's whoever you're with, our lives together. And they're the people to make those decisions because you don't ever want other people, even if it's family, even if it's parents, to, to push you in a direction that, you don't want to go. You have to make your own decision. You got to make your own decision. You got to do what's right for you. Because a lot of times, you know, they get caught up in the, oh, how cute is this? And how nice? and that's great. And it's perfect. But you might start to feel at a certain point like, I'm not there yet. Or we're not there together as a couple yet. And now you, you kind of have this outside pressure that, you know, sometimes can weigh on you, especially as, as things move uh, a little bit further down the road. Oh, yeah, exactly. It can affect the future. Um, if you're already in it now, you know, especially if it gets to the point of marriage, you know, you're, you're planning the wedding and you know, it, this person wants it this way. This person wants it that way. I mean, I'm sure you're, you know, you're engaged. Mm-hmm. You're, I'm sure you've, if you haven't already, you're going to go through it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Everybody's going to, everybody goes through the, you know, this, the same motions, the same thought process, the same, uh, you know, planning. And, and again, I think you have to be you have to love the the process. Enjoy the time. You know, stop looking at the next step, the next goal, right? Like, okay, okay, we've been dating for, you know, there is no time limit. There's no, oh, we've been dating six months. Now we have to get engaged. Now we got to start looking at the venue because you get so caught up in the bullshit and so caught up in the in the timeline, the, the fake timeline that, so, that worked for somebody else that now you believe you have to follow and it may not work for you. Right. It, it may not work for you. It may not be realistic even you got to remember that you have to be ready to spend your life together one number two if if you want to do a decent wedding whether you're doing a backyard venue um you're doing it all yourself you're going to a catering hall you're gonna have a dj you're gonna have a band you're gonna plug in a bluetooth speaker you have to factor everything in and a lot of times you know you may know right now, hey, I, you know, I want to marry you. I want to do, but it's not realistic either. Yeah, and, and you know, and even with the with the Thanksgiving thing, like, okay, you went over your. Now, is this the first time you went over your girlfriend's family's house for like a, a holiday type for, thing? For holiday, yeah, I yeah, for holiday it was because Easter really kind of got like brushed under the carpet. I want to say this year. Oh, with the whole COVID. Yeah. So, <laughs> so. Uh, so when when you go there, it, are you uh, are, are you nervous? Are you uh, do you feel uncomfortable at all, or or do you like how how does how does that process work? Really, to me, uh, because during the start of COVID, we got together just before uh, shutdown. Okay. So we did go through a little period of time where we were apart. You know, when the first thing started, and we couldn't see each other, and. Once, as I say, both sets of parents got over it and realized, well, listen, you can't stop it. Right. You know, life has to go on. Um, we were pretty much together and inseparable. It's like they, they allowed us to see each other and we were inseparable. Okay. Um, so with that being said, I was over there a lot. So, you know, we all got to know each other a lot more. And so I'm not nervous at all over there um sometimes i will say and do things that i won't do in front of my own family correct so when there should be that level of respect too i mean you're going over somebody else's house oh yeah yeah again a tip do not go on somebody else's refrigerator it's not yours so like again if you're comfortable going into somebody else's house and going into their refrigerator and touching their don't do it it's it's, first of all it's ridiculous it's weird like what are you doing well and that's how i was but we're so close now it's like my second family now um it was at first i was like i won't do that now like oh yeah go ahead you can leave that there i actually have my own drawer now in her room it's funny they it's like called jj's drawer right because when i get done work a lot of times um i'll go over there for a little bit 
and maybe we'll have dinner, or, you know, when school's in session, we'll do homework or whatever. And I don't want to be in my work clothes, so I'll change or whatever, and I'll, you know, I'll have stuff over there. See, that's intriguing to me because I've been with my fiance for a little over four and a half years, and over her parents' house, I still don't feel that level of comfort. And it's nothing to do with them because I love them, but I, I just don't. It's just hard for maybe again. This is this is a, a, a good conversation because it's hard for different people. Like I can't feel comfortable with her parents there, like having my own drawer in a house that I don't pay rent or a mortgage to, or just uh, you know popping open the laptop or using the Wi-Fi or just you know having my feet up on the couch because. I don't know. I just feel like it's not mine, right? Like it's it's their house. It's not even like if Hillary had her own place and you did that, I can understand it maybe a little bit more from my perspective. But at her parents' house, like if I'm sitting on the couch in my underwear, like having a beer, and her her mom and dad are walking by, I'm kind of like I just kind of feel a little awkward, right? It would be right. it would kind of be if you're doing a little bit too much PDA, if you're like making out on the couch and mom and dad are in the kitchen. I'm like, yeah, what, is this normal? Like who does this? Right, and it's you know at first it was like. Uh, I don't know what to, you know, what to do here. And then, you know, it was go get, you know, where the fridge is, go ahead, go do that. You know, right, this well, that, and that. I get that. It's gone into that point where, you know, I still will not, one thing I will not do. And we actually got into an argument about it. Um, not too long ago was they have, um, there is a spare key and they said, just go inside. Um, we'll be there, you know, half hour, hour, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no. Now, are you by yourself at this point or with yes. Hillary? Yes. Well, I would be by myself. Okay. I was, Hillary had yeah, to that, run out. Yeah, they had to run out. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. We got into an argument over it, And I said, it, it's not that I think you guys would ever accuse me of anything. It's mm -hmm. not anything like that. I don't feel right. Heaven forbid the house catches on fire. Something happens. An animal gets it. I do not want that to be on me. Yeah, it's not your house. It, it's not your responsibility. It just... I don't even just walk in, like, when I get there. I don't like doing even that. Even when they're home and the door, you know, the one door's open. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like, I always knock and you wait for them to say, hey, come in. And they're like, you, well, you've been here for, you know, you've known us for... Four, I get it, right? Like, I'll know you for five years, 15 years, 30 years. But to me, there, there should be that level of respect where this is your house, this is your property, this is your family, and regardless of how much you know or how comfortable you get, you're still an outsider, right? Like, you, they could be your second family, but they'll never be your family. You'll, ne you'll never have that level of comfort like you do with your own mom, your sisters, your brother. It's kind of like it's you're like, going to grandma's house. I, I kind of look at it that way. Right. Um, you know, make yourself at home, but even at my grandmother's house, I... I ask before I do something. You know what I mean? It's you don't just do it. You don't just walk in the door at grandma's house. Right. You still not. The other thing is too, right? You're at you're at Thanksgiving dinner. Now, you know, if you're by yourself, if you're with your family, I think you might have the tendency to go in a little bit more on the food. You might have like seconds or maybe thirds. Again, you know, maybe it's me. Again, tell me if I'm wrong. If I go eat at somebody else's house, at the fiance's house, at a friend's house, I feel like I'm a lot more conservative in my yep. food. Maybe I'll have one plate, I'll have a little bit. And, you know, you know, sometimes somebody will say, are you still hungry? And even if you are, I'll be like, no, I'm good. I'm really, like, you know, I'm full. Because you don't want to look like a, a pig at somebody else's house, right? Getting, like, four spoon fills uh, going into the refrigerator. Like, this is somebody, like, again, I think there's a, it's not a written rule. But, but you should, again, feel a little awkward. Like, if you're filling your plate and then taking shit home and nobody's offered you to take stuff home, again, don't do it. Yeah, and you know what? The first couple of times that we had dinner, the first time that I really um, talked to her parents and her Aunt Mary was there too, we um, had gotten done. I think we went out to eat, and then we came back, and we were just – she said, why don't you come in and sit on the couch? We can, you know, we can all talk. Well, that night, um, I don't even remember how it happened, but it was late. I think we got there about 11 because I wanted to have her home by 11. You know, the another unwritten rule, right. um, you know, at least at our age. Was, you're not dropping uh, you off at 2 a.m. Hey, get the hell out of the car, yeah. would you? It's 2 o'clock in the morning. And you're drunk, too. Make sure your mom doesn't see you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah. A uh, and so we went up there. And, of course, I've always... Um, Ben Walker up to the house. My father always, even middle school, walk her up to the house, mm -hmm. make sure she gets in. 
Um, so that's what I was doing. She said, why don't you come in? So we shut my car off. I went in. Before we knew it, um, here she is. Um, I think she fell asleep. I'm still talking with her parents and her Aunt Mary. And then we all had like a little competition. Who's going to stay awake the longest? Next <laughs> thing I know, I must have fallen asleep. And it was um, 7 a.m. Aunt Mary's still there. We're all, we all wake up and we're like, well, that was fun. <laughs> and then my, uh, my mother, I had texted her because I was like, oh, no, they're going to be like, where the hell is he? Mm-hmm. So I, um, I texted them. I said, listen, I'm so sorry. We were having a great time chatting. And I guess we all fell asleep. Next thing you know, uh, and keep in mind, we'd only been dating about two or three weeks at this point. Wow. Um, That's early on. We all ended up going out to breakfast, both families going out to breakfast because my mom called and said, hey, would you and, you know, they hadn't met Hillary yet. Would you and Hillary want to go to breakfast? I said, well, do you mean just us or Aunt Mary, mom, dad, and sister too? And I said, bring them all. So we all went to the diner and had breakfast. This just seems like just like the the biggest, happiest, most like jolly family of all time. It, it really. Everybody's <laughs> like, "You want breakfast? All right, everybody come to breakfast." That's what it felt like. It was like, uh, and for me, I come from a, I come from a background where it's like, "Do you want to have breakfast with uh, the parents?" Is like. I don't fucking know these people. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, we're not ready to meet these people. I don't ever want to see these people. So it's different. Like your 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 family and and Hillary's family is like everybody comes together. My family's like, yeah, we don't we don't know these people. We don't. Yeah, right. we're, we're how good. long are you gonna last? When you're married, let me know, and then I'll come to the wedding. Yeah, when when it's That's, time for when I gotta start digging in my pocket, let me know. Yeah, right. How much cash do you need? Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was funny. It's a though. Different upbringing. Yeah, it, it was funny though because. Never had I ever had a relationship either. And again, we're only two, three weeks in. Yeah, that's Where wild. both sets of parents like each other. They hit it off. They both like, my parents liked Hillary. Hillary's parents seemed to like me. And for me, that never happened. My parents never really, they wouldn't say anything. Right. But you know the look. You know when you get home, you're going to get the, oh, so what do you think of her? Eh. Eh. You know, you get yeah. that. And um, with this, it, it, it wasn't that way. Well, that's good. That's it, good. Right because... away you knew. And that's not normal. No. The, I mean, the family's getting along is, uh, you know, well, the family liking you and, and her family and, and your family liking her is a, is a big deal, uh, which, which is good. Not your typical scenario. So going back no. to Thanksgiving, when you ask me if I'm comfortable Yes. Uh, yeah. For, for, <laughs> I feel like from day one I was comfortable because it, it's. I guess it all depends on the personality types too. And they're so welcoming and, and so understanding that it makes it a lot easier. And her dad cooks for an army. And so does her mom. When they cook, they cook for an army. Um, her dad a lot of times will freeze meals and stuff because uh, obviously they're working from home. But he'll take like the Chinese containers and he'll freeze leftovers so he can just pop them in the microwave you know, at a later date. Sounds like my kind of dude. The, the, actually, that's a, that's a great segue to our next point here, which is, now I don't want to get anybody in trouble. We know that the, the government, and depending on the state that you live in, is trying to dictate how many people you can have over your own house in I your own property. I was illegal. I don't know if it's illegal. We don't do that here. It's not something we really, uh, you know, pride ourselves on. Like, hey, come to the United States. We're a dictatorship. You'll love it here. We don't do that, but... Uh, there are a lot of states, including New Jersey, that are trying to tell you don't have a lot of people, uh, you know, have your dinner and then Skype your family, uh, you know, whatever, have cardboard friggin' cutouts at the dinner, whatever, whatever they're trying to tell you. Uh, so have cardboard cutouts at the table. Right. It means it's, Go give grandma a kiss. It's super exciting. So uh, I know for... Personally, for me, we never really have a lot of people over. We just It's usually just immediate family, so we'll do anything from six to eight people. I will tell you, though, if we normally had 20 people over, this year we would have still had 20 people over. Yep. Because I think it's outrageous that states and government are trying to dictate how many people you can have sit around your own dinner table. Now, again, let me put this disclaimer out there that if you're scared of the COVID and you have older people or people that are sick and, and, and all that other stuff... You can stay away and you can quarantine and you can do whatever you feel necessary. On the other hand, I also feel that we're our own best, we have our own best interest at heart. So if we feel comfortable enough to go and have dinner with our family and have Thanksgiving like we normally would, I personally don't want the government telling me 
how many people I can have over my house or have neighbors ratting on, oh my God, we see 14 cars in the driveway. Listen, mind your own business. Stay over there. I'll live my life. You live yours. Because I think it's very dangerous when the government starts dictating how many people or even telling you or suggesting how many people you should have at your house um, d to have dinner They're Thanksgiving. They're telling you where you can and can't go. I heard rumor that Pennsylvania is, uh, and, I, and I don't even know how they would pull this off, but did you hear they're saying that you, to, in order to go to Pennsylvania, from Jersey to Pennsylvania, you must have a negative COVID test at least 72 hours in advance of your trip to go to PA. I mean, that's re I mean, now, how the hell are you going to enforce that? That's crazy because, I mean, we know a lot of people that work and live in PA and Jersey and are constantly coming so back what and are forth. they taking a COVID test every other day? Yeah, I, I don't know. Give uh, me a break. Yeah, it, it's really a, a really a dangerous push for you know, big government to continue uh, to continue at least try to enforce these out outlandish rules and regulations. And you're, again, going back to, okay, first of all, don't tell me what I can do on my own property that I pay outrageous taxes for. In my case, my parents do. But, you know, same point. Mm -hmm. We're paying outrageous prices and taxes, and you're going to tell me what I can do on this property? Yeah, I don't that, think so. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, we'll go back to they can suggest, they can tell you. Obviously, it's not a law, so they can't mandate it if it's not a law. But still, you know, they you try to make it though. Yeah, you have to. You have to kind of look past it. And, you know, people are like, oh, it's no big deal. Nobody's going to listen. Yeah, but just the idea that the government can try and and tell you, oh, uh, we you can only have eight people over for Thanksgiving, or don't have more than this, or it's so dangerous, or you know, you can't kiss grandma because you know it'll kill her. L again, if you're if you're scared, I get it. Listen, some people have different opinions, and that's okay, and we can agree to disagree. But you know, it should not be. You know, you should first of all, you shouldn't be shamed if you had a big dinner on Thanksgiving, right? You also shouldn't be shamed if, you know, grandmom and the parents wanted to stay away because, you know, they're, they're a little nervous about it or they don't want to catch it, which is which is cool. But, you know, again, I'll say it. I think it's very dangerous for the government to try to come in and say, you know, eight people max at your house because, you know, if you haven't noticed, that's just the first step in the next step for, for them telling you what you can and cannot do. I well, mean, you, you should have the ability to eat with at whoever the hell you want to eat with. Well, and I look at it this way, you know, I'd like to have the faith in my own family that if somebody had signs of it, that they wouldn't come anyway. Right. You know what I mean? Like, And most people are going to be like that. Like, uh, again, I believe most people are, you know, they're smart, they're understanding, they get it. Like you said, if somebody was feeling sick and, they, and everybody knows what's going on, they would say, listen, I, I have a high fever, I really don't feel good, I'm just going to stay home. And most people are going to say, good, stay home. I understand. No problem. We'd love to have you here, but it's better off. And they're going to be understanding. They're not going to hold a gun to your head and say, I don't give a shit if you don't feel good. Get over here for dinner. Cut the damn turkey. Yeah. And, and that wouldn't matter whether it was Kobe, whether it was the flu, whether you just, uh, you know, you had the sniffles. Like, uh, you know, again, I, I don't know if I'm like breaking atoms here or like. Anything but, goes. But, <laughs> but I don't get it. Most people that are sick usually stay home, and they, yeah. they get better. I mean, I don't know too many people that have, uh, you know, 103 fever. They're like, man, I can't wait to go out dancing tonight. Like, yeah, people we're going are to sick, the club. they stay home. I got, that, uh, I got that club fever. Right. <laughs> people that are sick stay Literally. home. They don't, you, you know, again, so again, I, I have trust in the people that they're going to make the right decisions, and I have more trust in people than I do in government. Uh, same here, because look at what they're doing. They, they don't care because at the end of the day, remember, these government officials are getting paid regardless of what the hell happens. Yeah, they, they haven't missed one paycheck in, during the whole pandemic. They haven't. But, uh, you know, I hate to beat a dead horse because I feel like I bring it up on every episode, but the small businesses are getting murdered. Yep. And they don't care because it doesn't affect them. But guess what? Every time that I see Dictator Murphy, and I'm going to say that because that's all he is, every time I see him out there at a restaurant smiling for a picture, putting it on Facebook, every time he tweets something out about the number of cases going up and you can have this many people at your... Don't tell me. Don't tell me anything because you are the biggest hypocrite that there is when it came to this whole pandemic. You're telling everybody to wear a mask. You ain't wearing a mask on the TV. You should be wearing one. There's no reason. There's techn I don't want to hear that you can't hear the person because guess what? 
You can hear the person. There's technology. They can mic you up. I don't want to hear that excuse. I don't want to hear, oh, well, uh, I've taken all the precautions. Uh, no, you haven't. I can see it right there. I, I think the, big, the, the biggest thing for me is, uh, you know, I think you're one of two people. You believe that, you know, the governors and the state and the federal government are trying to protect you from getting sick. And then on the other hand, you have more my opinion, where I, I don't, at le- I don't, for the majority, believe that they have our best interests at heart, that they're trying to protect us. Uh, you know, again, it, maybe it goes into conspiracy theory uh, territory, but I just don't wholeheartedly believe that, you know, these governors want us safe. I just don't, it just, I just don't buy it because... They can do what they want. They, so they don't care about you. They don't follow the rules, whether it's uh, Newsom in California, whether it's Murphy here in Jersey, whether it's Wolf in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, there's so many things that they do that contradict the last thing that they said. So it's really hard to believe people that don't even follow their own rules. Don't don't forget, it's all the president's fault, though. This right. is all the president's fault. Right. And again, regardless if it's Trump or Obama or Clinton, the president always will get the blame. Always. Right. Whether it's good, whether it's bad. And, and that just comes with the territory of, of being the president. You're always going to get the blame. Uh, when really, the way the United States work is uh, the states have jurisdiction over their own state. So regardless of what the federal government does, the states decide. That's why you'll have Florida, which is uh, very lenient on a lot of these. You know, they don't, they, they're no longer doing lockdowns. Like, yes, they have the mask. And again, most public places that you go into, you have to wear it. And they do the social distancing. But... They, they don't push it. It's not this constant, your business can't open. Um, you know, a lot of these, like, draconian orders. We're still at 25% where there's other places, I'm sure, that are full capacity as long as you're maintaining your distance, you're, you know, sanitizing, you're doing the proper procedures. There, But these businesses that are limited to 25%, I can tell you a lot of businesses are hopefully getting to the point where they don't give a shit and they're going to do whatever they feel is necessary to survive at that point. Because guess what? You're hurting people's families. You're not just hurting the business. Well, and and that's why I go back to, that's why I don't buy that they're worried about you and your family's health. Because if that was the case, they would also be worrying about closing these businesses and having, um, you know, time restraints and all these other things that are affecting people and businesses and depression and closing early and losing business and limited capacity. And all these things equal out to hurting a family just as much if, you know, God forbid somebody got, you know, COVID and died. Exactly. It's it's affecting people differently. But, you know, I see a lot of businesses that are afraid, too, to go against. You know, you saw that gym that wasn't afraid to go against. I just saw another YouTube video of... um. I forget if it was a restaurant or there was some business and they served him the warrant and he ripped it up Mm -hmm. right on live TV and said, I'm going to fight this. Where, where are all these business owners? They need to do this because otherwise this is going to go on forever. People, this is not going to end. Yeah. That, I mean, again, if you, if you kind of, you know, you're kind of looking at history now and you go back to you know when it's starting, thought okay maybe it might be two weeks, might be might, maybe the summer, maybe me a month, maybe it might be a couple months, uh, you know and they, and they keep you know listen they 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 can manipulate the numbers. It's you know they're giving you the the daily uh, case number, which can mean you know eighty six percent of people that have COVID are asymptomatic to it, eighty six percent of people. So they can say oh we had three thousand cases today, but I want to know the the mortality rate. I want to know the people that are in hospital beds on ventilator, because if they were giving you that number, the, the number would not even be in the thousands. Phil, I can't even tell you the amount of people I know that have had it. And I've asked every single one of them that I know that have had it. And you know what they've told me? It sucked, but I got through it. I'm still alive. That's it. I'm still alive. I did what I had to do. I got it. And now I know, you know, they wouldn't have done anything differently. If you're going to get it, you're going to get it. Yeah, and you don't want you don't want the the virus to become a way for them to take away your your, your freedoms. And that's what's happening, though. Yeah, and and really, you have to go back to uh, the people. So again, everybody's going to have their opinion, and that's cool. But you have to just for yourself question a lot of the things that happen. You know, regardless of where you stand on it, you know, question why why did they shut this down? Why are they continuing to lock it down? Why do they continue to push? 
um, you know, you got to get the vaccine. You know why? Even again, you can disagree and have your opinion, but just question why it's happening, right? Don't just be so, you know, gullible to believe, oh, it's because they want to keep you safe. It, it just read into it a little bit more. Do your research. Just yeah, just think about Use it. Use your brain. Yeah, just think about you know where we're at today because you know you talk to a lot of people and they're under the the uh, you know illusion that oh it's it's just for the time being and then once we get the vaccine we'll be good. Now the I, time being, this has been going on since February, March of last year. Right, and my question is. Okay, listen, if that if that's the reality and, you know, people get the vaccine and we're good, then then okay, then I'll, then I'll be fine with that. But, you know, I question when will it be enough because every time something else happens, it's another oh, oh, we'll be through this once we get through the summer and then we'll have the second wave, we'll get the vaccine, then we'll be good. So what happens if I heard the vaccine's already been I've heard the vaccine's done 3 different times now. I've heard it from the president. I've heard it from the governors that it's done. Well, where the hell is it? Right. What are you doing with it? And, are you going to start distributing it? Are you going to, what are you doing? And, and that's the thing. And they will. And, I, and, you know, it takes time. And that's, and that's just, you know, I mean, the amount of speed that they've gotten this vaccine done is unheard of. I mean, they've got it done in like, with Operation Warp Speed within like nine months compared to the normal, even a quick vaccine would take four to five years. My biggest thing is, okay, we get the vaccine. They distribute it. The people that want it, take it. When, when do we get the go ahead? When when do we get like it's not going to be in a day where somebody snaps their finger and they're like, oh, well, we got the vaccine, we should be good. Let's get back to it because just because you, the vaccine is available, they've again, if you if you look close and you listen to the people that are making these decisions, they're telling you now, well, yeah, we'll have the vaccine, but that doesn't mean we're going to stop doing masks and social distancing. So then then I think, okay, well, it was two weeks to slow the spread. We got to lower the cases. The cases are going back up in the second wave. Well, wait until we get the vaccine. Okay, now we're getting the vaccine. Now they're already kind of telling you ahead of time, even when you get the vaccine, whether you take it or not, that's not going to completely eliminate masks and social distancing. So, you know, you kind of start to wonder like, okay, well, where is, is there a finish line? Why do they keep moving the goalposts further and further away? Well, I heard this morning, I forget what I was listening to, um, but I was listening to something at work and... They were talking about the Hard Rock Casino in Atlantic City. And there's, a, I guess, a sign somewhere that says, KISS coming 2021. I have seen that. Okay, well, as far as I'm concerned, don't plan vacation. Don't plan to go to a concert. Don't plan anything. Because guess what? I see this thing going on at the rate we're at right now, where the governors and all your officials are ready to slap your wrist at a moment's notice and take you back and put you in time out. That's what this feels like. Yeah, it does. Mom and dad are taking my phone away because I called my brother an idiot. Don't do it. D don't do it, but the same, it's just a repeated pattern. We think we're getting close. It's kind of like you're dangling a steak for a dog, right, on a string, mm -hmm. and, and he gets close, and then you pull it back up. Exactly. And the dog tries again, and he jumps, and he pulled a little higher, and he jumps a little higher, and he never gets it. Well, that's what we're doing right now with this whole pandemic and opening things back up and getting these businesses open and getting the economy back. You're dangling bait. That's all you're doing right now. Christmas is coming. The holiday, you know, Thanksgiving is just the start of everything. Black Friday is... You know, I, I can only speak from what I saw, but Black Friday sucked. Now, it now, sucked. Now, how do you mean? Tell me. It, You know, you, you hear the horror stories that people are camping outside. They're way, it, it's a tradition for some families. True. And, you know, it sucks when you got to break tradition and, you know, whatever. But for these stores... Are you still allowed to camp outside? Well, that's the thing. I don't even know. I, I'm sure they were against it. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, what aren't they getting straight now? I mean, that's a big social gathering. Um, you know, I work at Target, so um, I was in at 4 a.m. Um, getting, you know, we do the online orders, and we were getting the store ready to open at 7. At 6.55, I went and took my break, so I went outside. And there was, now I'm expecting a decent line, maybe 40 people just in a line waiting for the doors to open. Mm -hmm. Now, that's unheard of. 
That's unheard of because, first of all, usually the stores are opening early. They're opening at 4 or 5 in the morning. Now, so let me ask you this. Is that, do you think, a product of, you know, obviously COVID has something to do with it, but is it also a product of there's really nothing that people are dying to get, and if they want to get something, maybe it's just easier to grab it on Cyber Monday or online? Which is today, by the way. True. And you know what's funny is, you know, you've seen Black Friday take a little bit of a dip since Cyber Monday became a thing, Mm -hmm. especially since Amazon entered the scene. Right. But it... It still had, you had people camping outside. There wasn't anybody camping outside. I talked to a couple employees because they've been doing overnights at Target as well um, the past couple weeks because they're doing Black Friday all month, right. all throughout the holiday season. They're doing different deals. And they said there were like one or two people that like knocked on the door and they're like, are you guys opening early? And But that was it. They were expecting, you know, our AP team had out, all of, you know, the guards, and they had the X's marked for social distancing. Another thing, by the way, that people are not following, people don't care, they really don't. You can tell the people that do care from the people that don't, and probably a good 80% of the people that are coming out and going shopping do not care. Correct. I had another two people today I watched walking through the store not wearing a mask, and personally, I wish I could be one of them. You know, like, I, it's it's hard to breathe. I hate wearing the thing, but you know, I'm doing what I have to do so I don't lose my job. Right, right. But so, the holidays are going to be screwed up, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. But I also think, on the other hand, that again, this has been a a long time coming. We've seen a gradual dip in Black Friday, and people, you know, uh, you know, remember years ago they would have all the videos of the. The people, they open the door and the people trampling each other and running into the store and (laughs) knocking over the shelves and beating each other up for TVs. It was YouTube day. Yeah, which again is outrageous, which again for a TV or, you know, I I get it. It became more like a sport than it really did just, you know, getting a good deal. Uh, You know, but I think the reality is the majority of people now are buying online. So they they don't have to stand in line. Unless you're doing a traditional thing to go out and camp out just for the experience because there are a lot of families that that do that right and if you just want to camp I outside i never understood yeah, listen it. if you just want to camp outside listen but you know you do you camp outside do i mean i would never do that I, again i don't know what kind of deal you're looking for or you can't wait until after christmas but listen if it's your thing and you you get off on that then listen sit outside target in the freezing cold you know bundled up in a teepee that's cool i'll wave to you as i go in with my coffee just, just <laughs> yeah, listen do whatever you want that's cool and you know i'm not disrespecting those people if that's what you like you know uh, that's what you like but I, I just think the reality is that a lot of people just rather shop online. It's easier. It's click, safer. Click. It's quicker. It's going to be delivered to your doorstep or whoever's doorstep you shall wish. Right. So I think that's really more of it. I mean, I think obviously COVID has something to do with it, but I think it was going this way anyway. People just, and you know, it just kind of helped kill it faster. Right. It, it, maybe this was, it would have happened two years from now or three years from now instead of happening this year. But, you know, it just gave people another excuse to say, listen, I like Cyber Monday. I get all my shit online anyway. Amazon delivers it. If you have Amazon Prime in a day or two, uh, you know, why even bother? Especially now people will go into the store, you know, normally. But I don't, I don't think they're going to make a trip out of it. Or I even noticed, I even noticed this year, there was no stores even open on Thanksgiving night. Because the last couple of years they were, oh, we're open in 6 p.m., Thanksgiving night. Yeah, and I think a lot of the stores, and I'm going to be flat out honest, um, did it for multiple reasons. They want to look good to everybody, especially your big corporations, Kohl's, Target, Walmart. So they gave their employees off. I have air quotes around that because guess what? It was not an entire 24-hour day where the employees were off. You still have employees going in because a lot of these stores you're coming in overnight so you get done eating with your family and you might go in at nine ten o'clock that night to do the overnight trucks that are coming in Mm -hmm. to stock the store and be ready but what was funny is you know you think people on black friday you're going to see them all in the electronic section usually right or the toy section for the most part yeah you know it got a little bit busy but the busiest part can you guess what it was? Mm, I don't know. Think to the beginning of the pandemic. What? Toilet paper, Purell. paper towels, 
chemicals. That entire side of the store was equally as busy as the other, as like the toy and electronics. And I laughed because I've never seen so many people trying to get toilet paper. I mean, my first question is, is there a, was there a sale on toilet paper and paper towels? No. There's, as far as I'm concerned, there is no such thing as a sale on them right now because they're coming in so quick. Or I'm sorry, they're not coming in quick enough. Well, see, this they're is going a, out quicker and they can come in. This is another point too. I mean, you know, think about this, right? Like, think where your mindset is. If you're getting up on Black Friday morning to get toilet paper, to get toilet paper, right? Like, listen, listen, just think about what you're dealing with when you're dealing with stuff like this. These, this is these are the kind of people that you got to worry about. And you like can, this is crazy. Like you can get listen. There's not going to be a toilet paper shortage, right? Or paper towels, and God and God forbid there is because your crazy neighbor has you know fifteen thousand rolls stacked up in the garage. You can use something else, right? Like you'll be okay if that's your biggest concern. You know, I I, I don't know if I can help you. Uh, if you uh, you know, I hate to say this, but uh, your hands are washable. Yeah, uh. yeah I, <laughs> they are though. <laughs> You know what I mean? There's a way around it. That That's the point of this. There's a way around it. And if you were getting up... And I'm just more concerned with the mindset of the people like the, that are... I got to get my toilet paper. Yeah, I mean, listen, we, we all have... We all have I heard there. a family, and I could not believe this, at the start of pandemic when I worked at Walmart, I heard it at the front door. Listen, we're not together because we got to be able to get um, three packs because we're limiting one pack per... They were literally giving themselves aliases. They have strategy. They, well, here's the here's the cool- just, It was like a, they were trying to strategize how they're going to get over on people, and little do they know, I was asset protection. I'm like, well, I'm waiting for you at the door. And he, he, here's the cool <laughs> thing about the uh, the strategy. Now, their strategy on what they're doing is is ridiculous. But now, again, imagine if they put that that strategy and that thought process into something good, or something where they can be successful, or something where they can build it up. Where they well, weren't we like got three packs of toilet paper, son. Yeah, I mean, congratulations, Dad. Uh, again, it kind of it kind of makes me, uh, you know, sad. It kind of makes me angry that people are putting such thought into strategizing and going to a, to a retail store to get toilet paper or to get paper towels. It just it makes me laugh. I I, I don't I mean, even it, get angry anymore. I just laugh. I mean, it's funny, but then you think about it, and you're like, man, like th- this is. You know, this is the the, the fear mongering that these poor people have been like. This fed. is why Canada laughs at us. Yeah, <laughs> it's stuff like, but it's true. You laugh, but it's true. But but the other thing is, you know, again, I, I believe that the majority of people do, don't don't act like this, right? Unfortunately, we have a way in in this in this country in this world to really highlight the people that do crazy things. But the majority of people are not doing that. The majority of people are not strategizing how to grab more uh, paper towels. They're not. Unfortunately, that stuff just gets put out to the forefront. It gets put on social media, and people pass it around, and it goes viral. But there is no way that that's, that's normal to the majority of people. There's no way. I would hope it's not. But you know what? It, it's, it seems like now it's becoming a norm, though. It, it's sad. Like, really? I, 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 I'm I, don't, seeing, I, don't, I don't see it. I'm seeing it only because, I guess, working in it, you see... And how many times a day we get asked, oh, is, did this come in? Is this in? It's, it's like people are... I mean, they're scared. I mean, it's really because they're they're fearful. And that, and that to me, is the thing that bothers me the most, is that they're they're reacting based on, on fear, on what they see on TV, on what they see on the news, on what they see on social media. And that's why I say it's more sad than anything because, I mean, they're scared. Like, they're, tru- scared, they're truly scared. They don't have to be as scared as that. There's... There's nothing wrong with taking precaution. I highly suggest you take precaution. If you weren't washing your hands before, well, okay, I hope I never shook your hand. But you should be doing some of these things that the pandemic has brought out that you should be doing. You should have been doing all along. You know, like, okay, social distancing. I'm not saying you always have to keep six feet, but... It's kind of a good thing too. Like if you're in the store, I don't want you on top of me, especially if I don't know you. Right. Even if I know you, I probably don't want you on top of me. So hop off. Right. It's just a, you know, listen, it's a personal space thing. It's But isn't wouldn't you think that's already common sense? What is? 6 feet's not that much. No. 
So isn't that like normal kind of personal space? It always depends. Like I kind of look at it this way. It depends on you know the situation we're in. If we're in a you know a sporting event, you know, and every and every seat's taken, it's it is what it is. You're putting thirty, thirty five thousand, forty thousand people there. I don't, I don't but expect you opted to be there, right? But I don't expect you know six feet. Now, if if I'm in a convenience store and I'm paying at the register. And you're about to top on my back for a ride back to the parking lot. I'm like, yo, can you scoot back a little bit? Because it's like, again, that that should be again, kind of like not going in the refrigerator at the parents' house, at the in-laws' house should be uh, un- unwritten law. But some right. people, I don't know if they just don't care. I mean, listen, maybe they didn't have parents that taught them. Maybe nobody's ever said, yo, hop back a little bit. Like, why are you so close? It shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't have taken a, a global pandemic for you to understand personal space and common sense but again wash your hands sanitize thing i mean it's all things that we all should be doing all the time right but but people don't and you know i guess we have to look at it now you know thanksgiving black friday it's done and over with what's gonna happen you know hanukkah thank you know, not thanksgiving christmas kwanzaa whatever you celebrate that is what we're on the track for now so are are we going to see our friends and family? Are we going to be well, you, able to go and do anything? Well, you'll be able to see your friends and family if you don't listen to the, the government who tells you you can't see your friends and family. Yeah, Again, but what if, if they go too extreme? Well, here's the thing. If you listen, then you listen. If you don't, then you'll be able to see your family. Like again, you're still deciding whether you want to see them or not. Now, if you if you listen to all the, the precautions and the CDC and the guidelines and all this other stuff then you won't see your family because you don't want to see them. That, that, that's it. There's, there's really no, it's not really that hard to figure out. If you listen, then you won't. If, if you and your family decide, listen, we're family, we think we're okay, we're not buying into the hoopla and the, and the negativity in the media, then you'll, you'll have well, the same Christmas you've always had. You know, here's the problem that I, I think I have, and it, it's, you know, going back to both families, they are alike in certain aspects and one of them is both of them at least talking about the parent side are terrified of this pandemic now they've gone Mm -hmm. through and this is with both uh, you know the complete truth is they've gone through i'm scared i'm terrified oh my god and then they went through a little phase where i don't really give a crap you know uh, Mm -hmm. about the pandemic and now we're getting back to Oh, please, please be careful. Be safe out there. Make sure you're doing it. Listen, if you're getting it, you're getting it. I, I don't care how careful you are. If you're going to get it, you're going to get it. If you're going to die from it, you're going to die from it. Sorry. It's the way it is. If if it's going to happen to you, it's going to happen to you. You can't stop it. Yeah. It, it, again, it, it's such a tough, it's such a tough topic because people are so passionate about it, uh, you know, either way. Right, like if you, if you believe it and and you want everybody to be safe, you feel this way, and then you know if you say what you just said, they think you don't care and you're young and you're stupid and uh, you know you just don't get it. And and, and well, you, that's you that, know that's so the thing now. It's such a it's such a t- again it's such a tough predicament to be in. You know, and and I would just say, listen, nothing nothing should trump your um, you know your freedoms, the the freedoms that you're born with, the rights that you have in this country. Uh, you know, listen, you could be safe, you could take precautions, you can respect other people. I would always say that that's the best thing to do. Uh, but I know for me, I'd rather have less government and more personal freedom. And that, to me, would be ideal and trump anything else that you could ever tell me or ever show me or any statistics or stats or, or media or graphs or whatever you're trying to show me. To me, as simple as this, nothing trumps, you know, my, my freedom that I was born with and the uh, the rights and the liberties that you have with the the Constitution of the United States. Well, you see, it becomes difficult now, especially us. You know, she's 19, I'm 22. We both live under our parents' roof. So where the two of us um, are at the point where I really don't give a crap what the government says, especially me, I do not care. If, you know, if my best friend wants to throw a party for Christmas – we're going to go and throw a party for Christmas. I'm not just letting that, you know, of course you invite your, your friends that you know. And again, you hope that if you feel sick, you're not coming out with a, you know, 103 fever, you're staying mm-hmm. home. It's common sense. Right. 
don't tell me what I can and can't do. But then you have the parents that you go home to. Well, it's my house. It's my rules. I don't feel comfortable. And this is where the problem comes in because neither of us are financially ready to get out and move out on our own. But now we're being held back from seeing this person, seeing that person, going and doing this, going and doing that. Because if we do, well, are we going to have a place to go and sleep tonight? Well, here's the thing right now. In that situation, you're 100% correct because when you live in your parents' house, you live with roommates, or you know, if you live basically under somebody else's rule, you do have to do... You don't, you know, I don't want to say you do have to do as they say, but you do have to respect that that's their property, that's their house. You are living under their rules. So technically, you know, in that case, the parents would be right. I mean, it's tough. And again, I would say the only way to really change that is if you get to a certain point where you have the financial means or, you know, you get old enough or whatever the situation is, you're able to kind of live under your own roof. And when you do, you live by your own rules. But it's kind of like when you go into a, a retail store, right? When you work at Target, when you go into Target, it's Target's rule do you have to wear a face covering? Now, I don't I don't believe in it. I don't think you should have to. I, I think it's overstepping guess, the guess bounds. Wh- guess what? But it's their business. It's their way. And if you don't like it, you don't come in here. And you It know, sucks, uh, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, um, you know, being in that role, at least at Walmart, um, where I was the person, one of the only ones, that could approach somebody about not wearing the face mask when it first started... Here's the reality of it for people that don't know. You really do not have to. That is the harsh reality. I can come up and I can approach you, sir. You, you know, it's suggested you wear a mask. We're asking all patrons, all staff, we're asking you to wear a mask. You could tell me to go F myself and I can't do anything about it. I cannot escort you out because it's not like you're going around I'm spitting and coughing in your face deliberately and saying ha ha now you got the virus. Yeah. I mean I mean it's a little bit of both where you know it, it's not a law and when you have a law you need you know police or somebody to enforce that law. On the other hand again like we said before you know it's a private business a uh, private entity so if, if they say to come in here you have to wear a mask. You have to wear it. Now again if you don't like it or you're not comfortable with it or it pisses you off then just don't go there. Right. Like, you know, you could take your business elsewhere, go to businesses, you know, do stuff online that uh, support your views and your values. And then the biggest way to, you know, hurt these bigger companies, if that's what you're trying to do, is just put your money where uh, your belief system is 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 more in line with what they believe, too. So if, uh, you know, and again, I know it's tough, like it's hard not to buy things on Amazon. It's hard not to buy things in big box stores, but maybe you limit it a little bit until this blows over. Uh, but again, it's and unfortunately, it's not the employee's fault because you know they don't want to wear the mask. Nobody wants to wear it, right? No, no, I don't think anybody's excited to put the mask over their face. You know, I haven't met oh. one person, whether they believe it or not, thinks, "Good morning, I can't wait to put on my, my my new suit and I got a great new mask." Like no, nobody says that. So if there's one thing we can agree on is that nobody likes wearing it, whether you believe yeah. in it or not. So that's a great thing. So let's try to find more positive things to kind of you know, uh, come together on, which is nobody likes wearing the face diaper. You know, what's funny is someone said it to me at target the other day. Um, one of my coworkers, I've been there since October. So a little over a month now, we're coming to the end of November. And I, um, said to him something, I think he looked at a picture or something. I think I texted it to him and he goes, you know, it's the first time I ever saw your face. Yeah. (laughs) And I said, what do you mean? Oh, you're right. <laughs> right. And it was funny because I went, sometimes I forget I have the mask on until I can't breathe. You know right. what I mean? I'm running around the right. store and I'm well, like, oh, when you man. start gasping for air, you're like, oh yeah, it's probably the mask. Uh, the thing, the thing that I'll, I'll, um, I'll leave you with is that, you know, obviously we're not seeking out another relationship because we're in ones. But if you are, be very careful with the face mask because it can do wonders. It can either make the person look beautiful because they maybe they have great eyes and it also worked the other way where they don't look as great with the mask on but you, you never know i mean the, the you're eyes you're gonna be in the doghouse the, by the end of the yeah. statement you know that <laughs> i'm telling you just be careful because the mask covers up i would say at least 80 percent of your face it's covering up your nose it's coming it's covering up your mouth it's covering up your your uh, not your ears but depending maybe if you're wearing a gator it does that's a lot of face covering 
And sometimes you don't know. You'd be like, man, damn, like she looks good, or man, he looks really good. Take off the mask. You take off the mask, and it's like, oh man, oh, just put drop it back like, on. <laughs> just put drop it back. Just, on. just drop like six points. So. I'm telling you, just be careful. You never I think know. I'm going to throw a party when we, you know, we're all allowed to not have to wear masks anymore. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to gather all my closest friends and family in a circle. I'm going to play that song by Future, that mask, mask off song. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. just going to have it keep saying mask off mask. until, you know what I mean, mask. until it gets old. Well, that's a, as um, as DJs too, for us and for uh, any DJs that might be listening, we have a lot of material for once we get back to the, uh, a lot of like hype material to really get the crowd going. You know, WAP, WAP, WAP. Uh-huh. I, I think I just oh, I, I, need I, I, to I, shut up. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you were going anywhere with it, but, uh, you know, it could be something like, if you hate the mask, make some, you know, and then, you know how we do. Phil Rossi, JJ Gold, like this is Anything Goes. Peace. Is Anything Goes with Phil Rossi and J.J. Golick.